All right, good morning. Um, we we're just waiting for a few people to connect here on the uh, yoga class. So let me just make sure that we are uh, able to get in. And we just have a replay of the uh, Loka Samasta Sukino Balantu uh, mantra going on in the background. And again, that is from a Swami Indian, or excuse me, um, he's an Italian fellow uh, that plays music. He does these uh, devotional chants. Um, it falls in line with a style of yoga that's called uh, bhakti, uh, bhakti yoga. So, um, yeah, so basically he's an Italian guy. His name's Swami Nirvanananda. And um, I had the pleasure of meeting him in um, uh, North Georgia. If you're not familiar with Georgia, um, Georgia's uh, got a pretty diverse state in the sense that the north is uh, full of mountains. It's the beginning of the Appalachian mountain range. And then as you start moving down towards you, you get more towards a coastal plain uh, type of environment. But my meditation teacher uh, had a meditation retreat center up in North Georgia called the Center for Spiritual Awareness. And um, Swami Nirvanananda was a devotee of Roy and his teachings. Um, maybe not directly a disciple of Roy's, but would you know frequent the retreat center. And... Um, uh, provide musical accoutrements to some of the um, meditation lessons. So, uh, yeah, so Nirvanananda, uh, again, that's the name of the Swami who's doing the music in the background. Um, I'll put a link into the video uh, description if you want to check that out one more time. Uh, good, so we should have some uh, folks uh, joining our uh, channel. Right, so I've got the YouTube that's going on right now, and then some people are joining us through Google Meet. So if you are tuning in through uh, YouTube, watching live right now, you can uh, send a chat over into the chat box. Otherwise, I won't be able to interact with you directly. Um, if you are in the Google Meet, feel free to also send a chat through there just so that I can address any concerns. Um, you can always unmute your mic if you want to say something. Um, but yeah, so basically, uh, since the last time I saw you, we had a holiday weekend, so it's been about two weeks. And so just an update with the baby, I'm sure some of y'all are curious to know, but, uh, Luca is just over five weeks now. So Friday, um, he was born on a Friday. So, right. So yesterday would have been five weeks. Um, so he's doing pretty good, growing, uh, getting bigger, you know, just seems to eat more and poop more, <laughs> what babies do. Um, depending on how the quality of the video is coming through, you might see I looked a little tired, but that's, I guess, to be expected. I did take a shower, but I just got curly hair, so that's just why it's all messed up, just my curly hair. Um, and then mom and the baby right now are going to visit um, – the mother's grandmother, so Luca's great-grandmother. Um, she's still with us and um, declining a little bit in health, so we wanted to make sure that uh, she was able to see her great-grandson in person for maybe an hour or so uh, today. So she's out doing that, and we're getting started with our class. So uh, today's class is just a gentle Hatha yoga class. So we may do a couple of uh, flows, right? So a vinyasa, uh, class typically incorporates a lot of the uh, going down onto the ground, the yoga push-up or slowly transitioning knees, chest, and chin through a series of movements, right? Upward facing dog or cobra pose, uh, and then going back to child's pose or downward facing dog as a flow, right? Connecting both sides of the body or a series of asanas connecting them with a flow vinyasa typically is what we might call those a vinyasa. Um, but also just to reiterate, vinyasa means to put in a special way. So vinyasa, vinyasa class doesn't have to incorporate all these um, flows into them. You can put poses in a specific way to achieve a specific result, and that can also be considered a uh, vinyasa. But anyway, hatha class means that we are going to uh, find a yoga pose, and we're going to sustain that pose 
for about uh, five minutes or so. So uh, it's gonna be a sustained effort in the posture. And what we wanna do is we wanna kind of get to the uh, root of what a um, asana really means. Asana means steady and comfortable position. Traditionally, it's a meditation posture, uh, but we wanna find steadiness um, and ease in these uh, yoga poses. And then we want to, once we find the steadiness and the ease of the yoga pose, we wanna start directing our attention inwards. Um, it's a term that we call pratyahara, which is the withdrawal of our senses. So we'll do a little light warm up like we normally do. We might do one or two rounds of sun salutation. And then again, we're gonna find our yoga pose we're gonna hold the yoga pose for about um, maybe three to five minutes, nothing longer than five minutes. And um, we're gonna try to turn our attention inwards and really experience our bodies in the pose, in the moment, and uh, try to rein in our mind, right? So in our day-to-day -day life, we get so caught up with the world around us, all of the obligations that we have to do, um, and, you know, I'm right there with you, right? So I'm taking care of a child now, helping maintain a home. So my thoughts can get really consumed about what the baby needs to do, what chores need to be done in the house, uh, you know, what other work obligations I might have. So that outward flow of attention. So in the yoga pose, we're going to try to turn it inwards, the pratyahara. So we're going to use the breath as the anchor in the yoga pose. So let's go ahead and practice anchoring our attention and awareness with the breath like we've normally done uh, for many yoga sessions now. So finding a comfortable seat, you don't have to be seated on the floor like I am, um, but you do want to feel comfortable wherever you are, be it uh, leaning against a piece of furniture or sitting in a chair or here on the floor, find uh, ease in your posture. So close your eyes. Go ahead and just wiggle the body for just a second to kind of feel uh, comfortable. And then close the eyes and start to turn your attention to the apparatus uh, of breath. So noticing maybe the abdomen moving, maybe the ribs are moving, the shoulders, maybe you feel it in the throat or in the mouth or the nose, but noticing the presence of the breath somewhere within this area. Okay, so again, our yoga class today is holding the pose, sustaining that ease of posture, and turning our attention inwards, withdrawing the senses. And so your point of focus, the drishti, the vision point, is going to be the breath for the majority of us. Now, if you feel compelled to explore some other area within your body or inward awareness, you can do that. Some poses have more prominent places to observe. So in our seated posture right now, easy pose, Sukhasana, this position, you could maybe turn your attention to the tip of your nose and just feel that area. Or your awareness could be right where your navel is, just above maybe three inches above your navel, noticing maybe the uh, diaphragm, right? So if your mind wanders away to uh, thoughts of what you have to do today or something that happened in the past or some sort of hypothetical situation or very abstract uh, awareness, just turn it back to your breath and then if you feel a place in your body that your uh, attention wants to go to, you turn your attention there. And try to maintain that focus until we begin exiting the pose, which I'll say a couple more breaths, and that'll be your cue to sort of come out of your inward focus and listen for the next instructions to move. All right, so from our seated posture, Let's do a light warm up. So sitting up nice and tall, just allow the crown of the head to draw up towards the sky, taking a big breath in. And then as we exhale, we're gonna work into the back of the neck. So exhale, bring the chin to the chest. 
So keeping your chin down, use your fingertips and just lightly massage uh, those muscles that run right along the sides of our, our spine, our neck. And they are erector muscles. And we got a couple different groupings of those muscles that run up and down the spine. Some of them uh, are actual uh, vertebrae to vertebrae, right? Just very small muscles, fine muscles. Others are very long bands that maybe stretch over uh, five to six vertebrae. And so we just want to massage into that, maybe superficially to begin with, and then uh, getting a little bit more depth work into the, into the back of the neck, the, maybe even the trapezius muscles here. Good. Take one more inhale. We're going to slowly exhale, bring the arms down. Keep your chin down, now the side of our neck. So as you inhale, rock your right ear over to the right shoulder, and we're going to work into this left side of our neck here. Good. So just breathe nice and slow. Let that right ear just melt towards the shoulder. Good. And if you'd like to, you maybe can open your eyes if they're closed. But you see, I'm just rolling my left shoulder here and just exploring what I perceive, right? So letting that area warm up and relax. Just some light movements. So if you are making some circles, just go the opposite way to the circles of your shoulder, just so that we can encourage um, a balanced movement pattern within our body. We don't want to be stuck doing the same thing, right? We get those kinks in our neck, we get stiff muscles and joints if we continue to do things the same way. So we just want to add a little variety. Next time that you exhale, bring the chin down to the center of the chest. Let's switch sides, bring the left ear over to the left shoulder. Again, try to stay upright with the spine. I know that our head is turned to the side here, but trying to keep at least the uh, thoracic spine and the lumbar spine vertically oriented. So if you wanna go ahead and make those circles, you can, little circles or shrugs with the right shoulder. All right, if you're tuning in, you're listening to this mantra, which is Loka Samasta Suki No Bhavantu. Basically, what that translates to is may all creatures, may all beings be happy. May they all find uh, peace. So maybe if your mind does wander, it wanders maybe to the mantra, the Samoan. You can send out your own blessings, hoping that all creatures do experience peace and happiness. Right? Pain and suffering, it's for the birds. We don't, well, we shouldn't want the birds to suffer either, but you know what I mean? We, we all want to feel happy and peaceful. Good. All right, one more time, rolling the shoulder. If you are opposite direction, of course, having changed directions, let's all exhale, bring the chin back down to the center of the chest. All right, now take the arms. We're gonna, I'm gonna scoot back so you can see, but we're gonna go out to the sides and up with our arms. So as you inhale, swing those arms out wide like you're kind of standing up, waking up, taking a big breath of air in. Exhale, bring those arms down. If you wanna bow your chin and just round the upper spine a little bit, you can. So we're gonna inhale and peel that chest open, reach up, stretching through those latissimus dorsi, getting a uh, nice spread between the ribs, the intercostal muscles. And as you exhale, coming down, we're letting the back of the vertebrae open up. So inhaling, opening the chest, reaching up as we exhale, bringing it down. Good, a couple more times, inhale up. And exhale down. Good, one more time, go ahead and uh, reach up with the arms. Now take your left hand to the floor, just reach the right arm over the body. Try not to let that right hip come off of the floor. So keep the ground exhaling here. Good, as we inhale, come back up and we're gonna switch sides. Exhale, left arm reaches over, right hand stays on the ground, and just switching side to side. Inhale up, exhale over, inhale up, and exhale up. One more time on each side. 
So over to our left, and then one more time over to our right. All right, good. Coming back up, go ahead and bring your hands to the side. I'm just going to scoot back so you can see this forward fold. So just uncross your legs and cross them the opposite way that you've normally um, been seated. We're going to fold over our thighs towards our knee, uh, switching legs. So turn your upper body, face your right knee. Take a big inhale to sit up tall. And as we exhale, just walking our hands forwards, bringing our upper body as close to this right thigh um, as possible. All right, so you might feel some compression right here in the um, abdomen. Right? So don't go too far. If you had a breakfast recently, you don't want to um, you know, really push into the stomach and our digestive organs. Uh, normally, if we're going to be doing any sort of movement or exercise, uh, we want to make sure that we um, fuel ourselves up a couple hours beforehand um, so that our stomach isn't terribly full. A light snack is okay, but uh, you know, if we're twisting or moving, we don't want to um, you know, challenge our like, uh, digestive organs uh, being full like that. And also, too, if you're putting yourself into a strenuous workout, um, you actually won't digest that food. You know, the uh, body's focused on something else at that point in time. All right, so again, no matter how far you've come down, we're going to switch sides. So slowly inhale, walk the hands back, or if you want to use your back muscles, you lift the arms up. Turn now and face your left leg, and as we exhale, we're going to come on down and sort of frame the left leg, left knee with our hands and folding as close to the floor as possible. All right, if you are getting lower, right, than maybe I am, um, or maybe lower than you normally have, make sure that that back hip, again, just isn't lifting up too much. And we are gonna feel a stretch in that back right side. So just breathe, nice and slow. All right, the muscles maybe here that are getting a stretch would be part of the obliques. We'd be getting stretched out in the deep lower back, we call the quadratus laborum. Some of those extensor muscles on that back um, right side. And then depending on what's happening here in the hip, we might be feeling some sort of uh, uh, stretch within those ligaments around the hip. And then one more big inhale and exhale. Let's slowly come back on up. Again, cartwheel the hands up, use your back muscles, or just walk the hands away, coming up to sit. Good. Take the legs apart now, right? So we had our knees bent for a little bit. Uh, so take the legs and outstretch them in front of you. We are bouncing the knees up and down. If you can't see that, again, my legs are straight, and I'm just bouncing the knees uh, up and down there. Okay, and if you'd like to make some circles with those ankles, imagining that my hands here are on ankles, I was circling the feet, whichever direction feels best for us. But we are gonna switch directions after a couple of circles. So that you're gonna uh, creating a balanced movement pattern with our joints. All right, so from our seated posture, let's transition to hands and knees. Do a little bit more warming up the body and we're gonna move into a down dog position. So coming onto your mat, we're gonna be hands and knees. So that's gonna be hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, uh, just like a tabletop. All right, so rocking our hips, maybe side to side, swaying, working the inner thighs. You can also do some light little circles here. All right, if you're feeling playful, imagining again that you're a four-legged uh, animal, you've got a little tail, whatever that might feel like. It's nice to be playful and use your imagination. Life can sometimes get a little dry, so we need to have a little uh, humor, jovialness in there. All right, so from a traditional tabletop, let's move into a traditional cat-cow, which is basically extension and flexion of the spine. So use an inhale to roll those shoulders back. See if we can drop the lumbar spine, 
lift the tailbone, anterior pelvic tilt here, lifting the chin and sort of extending through the back. Right now, opposite is going to be the flexion. So we're doing anterior or sorry, posterior pelvic tilt. Tailbone tucks under. We're pushing the middle of the thoracic spine into the air. Chin tucks. We're using the breath to create this movement. So inhaling really helps to come into our um, cow back and our exhale can help accentuate the cat back. Now if you want to reverse those, you can try exhaling into uh, your cow. You can try inhaling into the cat. There's nothing wrong with trying uh, breathing a different way. In my own personal practice, I've always found, though, that the inhale works best when we try to expand and open the chest, and that exhales work when we're folding in, when we're collapsing the body in the All right, let's do one more round. Big inhale into our cow back. Exhale into the cat back. All right, we're going to move the knees apart, bring the big toes together, let the hips sit back towards the heels, arms reaching forward, forehead onto the mat for child's pose balasana. All right, now depending on how you feel in your knees and your ankles, uh, maybe you can't get down this low with your hips actually touching the heels, or maybe there's an issue with the top of your feet. Right? You can always keep your toes untucked. You can keep the hips uh, more away from the heels, directly um, vertical of the knees. And maybe you just take your arms out in front of you a little further. If you have a blanket or a pillow or cushion that you want to put underneath your upper body just to give you a little bit more relaxation, you can always bring props uh, into the class. All right, this is also a variation of uh, puppy dog pose itself, when your hips are a little bit um, more vertical than these versus back at the heels, which is our child's pose. So just the shift up like that, you kind of change the pose entirely. And of course, like I said, a little bit more accessible for knee issues and ankles and uh, feet issues. All right, so child's pose or puppy dog pose doesn't matter. Let's slowly come back up onto our hands and we'll move into downward facing dog. So tuck your toes, send those heels straight towards the floor. Hips are going to try to lift towards the ceiling. All right, hands are spread about shoulder width distance apart. Fingers are spread nice and wide. And you can pedal the feet here, working into the back of the legs. All right, so just be gentle, right? As we go through life, there's a lot of different things that can happen to um, impede the body, right? We have subtle injuries or maybe catastrophic events um, that cause injury to the body. So always go slow as you warm up, knowing your ability and your limits. And then, of course, as you're uh, doing something, still keep that presence about you so that you can avoid uh, future uh, injuries or aggravations to any uh, higher injuries. So circling the ankles is a nice way to go into the ankles here, circling them one direction and the other. Maybe even circling the leg and the thigh just to get into the hip. So you can kind of see I'm relaxing a leg and making some circles. Another way to do that is to take a leg up back behind you, bend the knee and circle uh, the thighs like that. Always make a yoga pose your own. So just make my downward dog my own. All right, walk your feet slowly to the top of the yoga mat so that we can come into forward fold. I'm going to kick my socks off here. But forward fold, bend the knees, let the belly touch the thighs, grab your elbows, shake the head yes and no. If you don't want to grab your elbows, that's fine. And the arms just dangle towards the floor. But we want to shrug our shoulders. Shake the head and the neck. Loosen the body up. All right, if you are grabbing your elbows, cross your arms the other way. 
if you've done anything um, that requires the other side to get balanced out, go ahead and do that now. So maybe if you were pedaling your legs, you spent some time on the right leg or left leg, just get into that other side uh, equally. Good. Take one more inhale, and as you exhale, bring those hands down towards the floor. We're going to walk the hands up the legs and slowly come into Tadasana. So I know that it's a little hard sometimes with the webcams here to get a uh, full shot of the body in a small room, so I apologize about that. But we are, again, going to be at the top of the mat here in Tadasana, so our mountain pose. Feet are hip-width distance apart. Shoulders are rolled back, doing a slight tuck of the tailbone, so not letting the, the hips push back, but instead tucking under so that we've got a nice, straight, vertical uh, orientation of the body and the core. And that tuck is going to bring a little bit of engagement into your core, your abdomen. Good. So standing nice and tall, let the breath rise up into the crown of the head. And again, I know you can't see my upper body here, but we're lifting up through the crown and then grounding through the feet. Tadasana, mountain pose. All right, we're gonna move again through a short round of sun salutations, very slow sun salutations. So from the top of the mat, take an exhale, just lower the chin to the chest. With an inhale, sweep your arms up. Take a big breath in. Open the chest into our Urdhva Hastasana pose. Exhaling, hinge at the hips, folding forward, bringing the hands towards the floor or the shins. Step your left foot back as you inhale. Nice long runner's lunge here. And with an exhale, step the right foot back for downward facing dog. Okay, transitioning. Knees, chest, chin, inhale into plank, exhale, knees first, elbows go back, then chest and chin. Good, all the way down to the hips, untuck your toes, shoulders roll back as you inhale, looking forwards, Mujangasana. As you exhale, slide those hands back, tuck the toes, and push into downward facing dog. All right, lunge on the opposite side. So we're going to step our left foot forward. Big inhale. And as you exhale, step the right foot to the top of the mat forward. Fold. Stand up, inhale, bring both arms up. Forward, Bahastasana. Good, find forward fold again, exhaling here. Good, left foot steps back. Big inhale, nice long runner's lunge. Exhale, right foot back to downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Plank as you inhale. And then as you exhale, knees, chest, chin, eight pointed prostration. Ashta Namaskar, Ashta Pranam. Good. As you inhale, shoulders roll back. Mujangasana. You can even lift the palms here to make sure that there's the upper back muscles that are working. And then as you exhale, find your downward facing dog. Good. And take your right foot, step it forwards. Big inhale, nice long lunge. Exhale, left foot to the top of the mat. Forward fold. Stand all the way up as you inhale. Big breath in, arms reach up. Now as you exhale, just place the palms together, bring the hands down to the center of the chest. Okay, we're gonna move through some standing poses now. Okay, so we are at the top of our mat, hands are at the center of the chest. We're going to step back for warrior one. All right, so take a nice inhale, and as you exhale, step your left foot back, and make sure that your right leg is straight. Okay, we're gonna turn the left foot out to a 45 degree angle. So that's not directly facing the long side of your mat, Instead, it's oriented a little bit more towards the top of the mat here. All right, keep your hips facing the top towards your right knee, right foot, and the front of your yoga mat. And with an inhale, let's reach those arms up, big breath in. Exhale, bend our right knee. So we are in warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. 
Okay, lift up the arch of your back left foot. Make sure that you're really drawing up from the floor. Okay, keeping the hips wrapped forward. We should feel a nice stretch through the front of our left leg here. Okay, and if your knee is ever bothering you, you don't have to go deep into the pose. I know some people really like to have that lunged leg really far forward and doing this crazy back bend, right? But if your knee's bothering, your back is bothering, you shorten the stance, maybe even straighten the leg. Okay, good. So like I said, we're gonna be holding our poses for about three to five minutes. So get comfortable, turn your attention to your breath. And find steadiness and ease in the pose. That's what asana means. challenge our right thigh by moving from warrior one into warrior two just to give you a heads up so you know that where we're uh, to where we're transitioning all right to so make our way into warrior two take a big inhale as you exhale turn the hips in the chest to face the left foot as it also spins out to face the left side of the mat. Arms, as we exhale, are going to come down horizontally over the back and front leg. So we've come from warrior one, inhaling, turning, and as we exhale, finding warrior two. All right, so there's gonna be a little different sensation here in the front of our left hip. You also might feel a different, different sensation on the inside of the right hip, because now we're uh, actively pulling that right knee open. So you might feel it right here in the top inside of that right thigh and hip. Good, look over your right hand, send energy through the fingers, awareness through the fingers. And then we can use those very uh, lofty sort of new agey uh, terms for you know the awareness of the body, right, the energy, the current, the other terms like the prana, the chi, or ki. Right? What that means is have a conscious awareness of these places in the body. So as you are centered in on the breath, we've withdrawn our, our awareness from the external world, you know, whatever that might be, the color of the room that we're in, the sounds of things happening in other areas of our abode. And we are just aware of ourself, of our body, of our breath. We've turned attention inwards to ourself. Good, I know it's tough to stay here. You're doing great, breathe slow. It's near the end of a sustained yoga pose that we really get to see what we're made of. The mind gets really agitated and active. The fatigue of the body feels hard. And that reveals to us where the mind wants to go when we encounter similar types of situations in the, in the real world. Right? Something that agitates us and bothers us. It's good practice. All right, take two more breaths. We're going to transition to standing at Tadasana. So it's going to be swinging our left leg forwards as we step in, uh, to the top of the mat. So take one more big inhale and exhale. Now as you inhale, swing that left foot and arm forwards, stepping into Tadasana. Good. Shake out the arms and the legs. And we will find uh, a, a nice calm Tadasana just by reaching the arms out to the sides and up and to our sides. So as you inhale, sweep the arms out and up, take a big breath in. And exhale right into Tadasana. So arms are just coming alongside the body. Close your eyes. 
Yeah, check it. Okay, we're going to try that on the other side. So we're going to step from Tadasana back into Warrior One, and then we'll hold Warrior One a few minutes and then move into Warrior Two with the right leg back. Okay, so from our Tadasana, just inhale, sweep the arms out to the sides, and up, big breath in. As you exhale, place the palms together, hands to the center of the chest. All right, just to give you a different orientation, we're going to inhale, lift our right leg, exhale, step it back, turning hips a little bit to the side, turning our right foot a little bit to the side, not 90 degrees. Remember, it still faces a little bit to the front. Inhale, wrap the hips and the shoulders to face the front of your yoga mat, arms reaching up overhead, and as we exhale, deeply bending our front knee, now our left knee should be. If you've switched legs, no big deal. Just make sure that you've done this pose on the opposite side. Okay, we're going to be driving back through that right heel, trying to lift up through the inner um, arch of that right foot as well. So we've got this nice presence of opening in the front of our right hip. You gotta keep your arms lifted if that feels okay for you. So what that looks like here from the front, it's going to be a posture like this. Okay, you want to make sure that you are active with your legs. So as you settle into the pose, your awareness being on the breath, maybe awareness travels to some other areas. We could ask ourselves, Rhetorically, what can I do to improve this pose more? How can I make it more steady and stable for myself? So maybe firming up the legs, maybe engaging the core a little bit more. Good. Take two more breaths, and then we'll transition into our warrior two, okay? So inhaling. And exhaling. One more big breath in. Start to turn the hips to the right. Turn the right foot out to the side. And as we exhale, horizontally orienting our arms, keeping that nice bend in our front left knee. So we'll hold this pose for a few minutes now. Breathe slow. And again, just really appreciate the how the mind wants to, you know, travel uh, to to these, you know, thoughts, right? So as you're body gets fatigued, as the pose gets harder to hold, just notice where that mind goes. Be curious. They say knowledge is power, right? So if you know how you, your body, you want to cope with challenging things, then that knowledge of those, those coping mechanisms can help you overcome uh, ones that are uh, not you know, helpful or useful to you as a person. So if you're you know, thinking negative things about someone or something, just notice that, right? If you want to go and do something else, notice that desire to run and do something else. So awareness, knowing yourself. Good. Take one more big inhale. We're going to step to the front as we exhale. So inhale, exhale, step the right foot to the top of the mat, Tadasana. Shake it out for a second. 
and then we'll reset in a nice, um, peaceful way. So with an inhale, sweep the arms out and up, take a big breath in, reach up, palms together as you exhale, hands to the center of the chest, close the eyes for a moment. Okay, I'm going to challenge us now moving into a balance pose. So we're going to be balancing on one of our legs. And so if you are uh, standing on a mat that's on a carpet, just be aware that uh, your, uh, your foundation is a little unstable. So if you wobble in a balance pose, don't be hard on yourself. Just know that the more stuff underneath our feet, the, the less foundation is there. So if you have, for example, you can see I have a wood floor. So if you wanted to step back, if you have a tile floor, wood floor, whatever it is that's a little bit firmer, feel free to step over there. So our pose today is Garudasana, eagle pose. So we're going to uh, cross our arms, grab the uh, shoulders or wrap the upper arm. And we're gonna do the same thing, wrapping a leg over the other and sitting into uh, this sort of wrapped pose. If you have a yoga block at home, you can use a yoga block for this uh, pose to help you when you cross your foot over to balance. And actually, just so you can see a little bit better, I'll use this purple block here. All right, so bring your feet together from your Tadasana. If you are using a block, place the block to the outside of your left foot, um, not at the ankle, but just towards the middle of the foot, okay? We're going to take our hands to our hips and find chair pose, Utkatasana. So take one big inhale, and as you exhale, push the hips back, coming into a, a gentle squat. And from the side here, it's just going to be looking something like this, nothing terribly uh, strenuous. All right, so squatting here, we're going to cross right over left, and that right foot is going to use the block to uh, support you can always change the height of the block if you need to. All right, hands on the hips. Inhale, lift your right knee. Keep the bend in that left knee. Cross the right knee over the left thigh and rest your toes either on the floor or on the block. And just see how low you can squat here. Okay, we want to be, um, once the right knee is crossed over the left, we want to pretend that we're pulling those knees apart. So they can't because they're crossed, but try and you'll feel engagement in your hips. All right, if you don't want to go any further, you can stay just like this. All right, if you want to go further though, join me with a big inhale, open the arms. And as we exhale, we're gonna cross left arm over right. So this right leg is up, that means the right arm will be underneath. Cross at your elbows, either grab your shoulders or continue wrapping, seeing if we can get our palms together. Good, as you inhale, lift the elbows away from the knees, sit a little bit lower, and if you're on the block, maybe kick it away and come into the pose. Good, pull the elbows apart just like you are trying to pull the knees apart, and you feel a nice stretch in that left shoulder. Good, if you fall out of the pose, no big deal, just Smile, relax, it's okay. Good, breathe, inhale. Exhale, let's take two more, big breath in. And out, one more, inhale. As you exhale, relax the arms down first. Inhale, sweep the arms up, try to lift your right knee, balancing on that left leg. Exhale, return to Tadasana, shake it out. And then let's calmly enjoy the pose. So inhale, sweep both arms out and up, big breath in, palms together. Exhale, hands to the center of the chest, close the eyes. Good. Take another big breath in, we're gonna switch sides. So as we exhale, slowly take our hands to our hips. If you are using a block and want to move it to the other side, go ahead and do that. The hands will be on our hips once you get into uh, the position with your props. Big breath in. As you exhale, set the hips back like that. Uh, yoga squat for chair pose. All right, we're going to cross the left leg over right now. 
So as you inhale, lift your left knee, cross it over the right leg. If you're not using a block or don't have a block, you can still use the toes as a support there, kickstand. All right, see how low you can sit. Feel this in the right hip now. And then you guessed it, we're gonna inhale, open the arms like a T, cross left under right now. Again, wrapping at the elbows, grabbing the shoulders, or continuing to wrap the forearms, placing those palms together. Good. Sit low. Pull your lower belly up. And just breathe. All right, let's get it out of the pose. Another two breaths in. And out, good, last inhale as you exhale, relax the arms, sweep them up. Let's see if we can lift our left knee in front of us. Good, as we exhale, slowly bring it back down, find your Tadasana. All right, shake it out for a second, and then we'll enjoy Tadasana more poise and peace. So as you settle down, inhale, both arms out and up. Exhale, palms together to the center of the chest. Close your eyes. Good. Take one more inhale as you exhale, arms alongside the body. If you're facing the top of the mat, you can stay there, um, or you can turn and face the monitor if you're turned away. I'm going to face y'all, and we're going to do a yoga squat malasana, which is uh, not like awkward chair. We actually want to have our feet a little wider than our hips. And we're going to be squatting down to so the natural position for the body, squatting right down in between the knees and the thighs. So as you inhale, sweep both arms out and up, just like we've done before. Palms together as you exhale, bringing our hands to the center of the chest, and then letting those hips drop. Knees go towards the feet, towards the toes. Go ahead and see how low we can squat here. If your heels are lifted, that's totally fine. Good, but coming down, use your elbows to open the inner thighs and breathe. All right, so as we hold the yoga poses, remember each uh, breath in maybe is uh, exploring some position or some post, uh, so, uh, some area <laughs> within, the, within the body and we are exhaling, relaxing, uh, any tension that we observe. And then we're just settling down, right? If there's a mental component to the, to the tension, that exhale, we're certainly relaxed and we can feel ourselves quite literally settling into the pose. This is a great one because our inner thighs get so tight right by the hips. And this position is such a natural position for humans, the squat, um, so if you're not able to get all the way down uh, in between the uh, legs with your upper body, it's something to work on. Yeah. Take one more big inhale. We're going to exhale, bring the fingertips to the floor, hands behind your hips, and then have a seat in the middle of the mat. Take your legs forwards, and we're going to move into uh, some seated forward folds. So first one is Pashimottanasana, the western facing forward fold. All right, so feet are out in front of you. You're going to use your hands to kind of scoot the hips away and see if we can get those legs together. If you have a strap or a towel or something that you want to help get you closer to your toes, go ahead and lasso the bottoms of the feet. Make sure that the majority of the um, torsion that you have is going to be right here at the balls of the feet. You're not pulling uh, from the soles. All right, so sitting up nice and tall. We call this preliminary seat pose a dandasana staff posture. But we're going to inhale and sweep the arms up. Take a big breath in. As we exhale, using your core, we reach the heart forward. Then use your hands to either grab the strap or maybe hands come onto the feet. 
or we're gonna just fold over our legs. All right, allow your eyes to close. Remember, an inhale lengthens the spine, brings awareness to some component of tension in the body. And as we exhale, we're trying to surrender uh, some mental layer of tension that results in a physical relaxation. All right, take another big breath in and out. We're gonna to transition to a counter pose from this, which is reverse tabletop or reverse plank. But as you inhale, we're gonna reach both arms up. Exhale, hands come behind us about six inches away from the hips. I'm gonna scoot forward just so I have some room here. But hands, again, are six to eight inches away from the hips. Fingers face the hips and feet. As you inhale, roll the shoulders back, push through the arms, lift the chest. Option one is keeping the legs straight, pointing the toes and lifting here, reverse plank. If that doesn't feel good for you, just bend the knees so that they're about 90 degree uh, bend, hips in line with heels, and you're gonna push into a reverse tabletop. But look back behind you, and you're driving as, as much as you can through those arms to get a nice stretch in the front of the uh, shoulders and the chest. Good. Take one more big inhale. We will lower down and have a seat as we exhale. Okay, next posture is Janu Shirsasana, which is head to knee pose, one leg. So single leg forward fold. Take your left foot, bring it to the inside of the hips. Make sure that your hips are square to the front of your mat or that foot that you're facing. Just uh, like before, we're gonna inhale and take both arms up. Use your core to fold over that right leg and maybe forehead comes to knee. If not, that's okay. Again, use your strap or prop, making sure that when you have it across the bottom of the foot, it's right where the big to, uh, the toes meet the foot. So you're pushing into that toe mound. And engage your bottom leg, this right leg. So see there's a relaxation. Now engage the leg, keep it engaged. We want what's called reciprocal inhibition. So when we engage our quadricep here, it's telling the hamstring to relax. Whereas if we um, don't do any engagement with that quadricep, um, this hamstring might engage as a precautionary measure when we come into the forward fold. But engaging it, again, reciprocal inhibition tells that uh, tissue to relax and maybe we actually get some uh, stretch into that tissue. It's also gonna be a nice challenge for the quadricep muscle to remain um, uh, engaged, contracted. Good. Let's finish up. Exhale as you inhale, sweep both arms up. Good. We're going to go ahead and place our uh, hands behind us. Left hand stays behind. So we're gonna lift this right hip into the air. As you inhale, sweep the right arm up, point the right toes, exhale, drive through the heel, the hip, push that hip up into the air, reach over the body. Good, let's slowly lower back down, switch sides. So left leg is gonna reach right on out in front of you. Right foot comes uh, into the inside of the uh, left thigh. Janu Shirsasana facing this left leg now. So toes are active. Left quad is active, we're inhaling both arms up, exhaling, engaging the core, maybe reaching for the toes or that strap or prop and folding forward. Keep the left quad engaged. You're gonna feel the muscle uh, sort of jump and react to that. So ask yourself, how long can I sustain this?
Good. Let's take one more big inhale and exhale. We got just a little bit of time left, so we're going to need to transition onto our back. So with an inhale, sweep both arms up. Let's exhale, hands behind us. Now the right hand is what we use for support, so put it about six inches away from you. Inhale, sweep that left arm up. As you exhale, point the toes, drive through that left heel. See if we can get the hip into the air, reaching over the body. Nice little wild thing. Perhaps you would want to call that. Good. Slowly come back on down. Place the soles of the feet together. Before we get onto our back, we're going to do Baddha Konasana. Again, just to work the inner thighs a little bit more. The soles of the feet are together. Interlace your fingers. Grab the outer edges. Take a big breath in. Sit up tall. Try and see if you can actually engage the back of the hips. Get those knees down first. Get a big breath in. Exhale. Then fold forwards. All right, so we're using our arms here, the biceps, to pull the chest towards the feet. And the outsides of our hips here are keeping those knees down as much as we can. You can always use your elbows to press into your adductors. Good, take another round. Slow breath in and out. Use an inhale to slowly come away from the floor. Taking your hands, just help close the knees. All right, you can use your hands behind you just to help rock the knees side to side, a little massage for the lower back. And then make your way onto your back. We're gonna do a reclined twist pose. So we're laying on uh, our back. I'm not going to be in, in the middle of my mat, but you're in the middle of your mat on your back, straight in your left leg. Bring the right knee up and give it a hug. So we're hugging the right leg in. Left leg is long and strong against the ground. Now left hand holds the right knee as we twist only the lower body to this left side. So the right shoulder here stays on the ground and maybe I'll look towards the right and extend that right arm out if it feels comfortable. Good, so just breathe slow. All right, remember always coming to the breath, anchoring our awareness there, turning our attention inwards. Right, explore the body if we're able to without letting the mind become too active and really distort our awareness. Good. We're going to slowly bring that right leg back up when you are ready. Take the right leg to the floor and then switching sides, right? So left leg comes on in. We're going to give it a hug with an exhale, using your right hand on the knee, left arm maybe out to the side, twist the lower body to the right. And again, we don't have to go far. This right hand is just controlling how far we twist the lower body. Okay. When you feel ready, let's use our right hand, help that left leg back up one more time. We're going to hug the legs, but this time it's both at the same time. So both knees are going to come up. We're going to grab around the shins with our arms, if possible, and hug it in. And maybe a little rock side to side to massage the lower back. Another option is placing the palms right on your kneecaps and with both legs in the same direction, making a little circular motion. This can be a nice massage for some of the muscles um, real uh, deep into the hips here. Um, 
It's basically the origin point of the gluteal group and a little bit of that quadratus laborum, getting a massage there. And if you make those circles, make sure you go the opposite way. All right, go ahead and straighten your legs, make your way uh, onto your back, coming into our corpse pose, Shavasana. All right, and once you get down onto the ground, depending on how you feel, maybe you wanna roll those shoulder blades together, let the palms face open towards the sky. Uh, some of us might feel better laying on our side if you've got an upset stomach. But coming into Shavasana, we really want to incorporate this idea of Pratyahara, withdrawal of the senses. So with your eyes closed, take your attention and begin to scan the body. Notice if there's uh, any tension within your face, see if we can let the uh, eyebrows soften, right? Letting the forehead unfurl. I'm very guilty of thinking a lot and having some sort of lines in my eyebrows. So see if you can let your eyebrows and forehead relax, right? See if we can soften our cheeks in the jawbone. Right, allow the neck and the shoulders to soften. The arms, the legs. And then notice the abdomen and your chest. Notice the, the breath as it comes in, it pushes against the weight of the body. And as you exhale, gravity wants to uh, push you right into the floor. So surrender into your exhale, naturally letting the body uh, dissolve into the floor. Imagine for a moment, everything that you feel against your body is uh, an ocean of sensation. You are floating within this ocean of sensation. And just like when we go swimming, we, our person, right, our awareness does not get wet. The body gets wet. And so as you're floating in this sea of sensations, recognize that you, your essence is separate from the body of experience of sensation. That no matter what happens, your awareness of self remains the same, unchanged. whether it be the awareness or sensation of a breath in or a breath out, right? the sense of existence of self remains the same. If it's the sensation of coolness against your skin or heat, right? that sensation, it comes and it goes, it changes, but we don't change. Our essence never changes. So notice how your awareness of sensation, that attention travels out to that object, be it again the breath, the perception of heat, of cold, of dry, of wet, 
awareness travels out towards it. So turn the attention back in towards itself and just be aware of your own essence. It's when our attention flows outward. It's when we start to have troubles, when we begin preferring one thing over another thing. But we can remain peaceful if we can remain anchored with constant knowing our true essence of beingness. Perhaps there is within you now that perception of inner peace when you just rest within yourself. So try not to get too caught up with the changes in the world there's always going to be changes. There's so many possibilities for uh, experience that everything is going to change. So knowing that there's change and the external world doesn't last forever, stay with the peace of yourself, which lasts forever. So being aware of your fingers and the toes, just notice the little changes of sensation as you wiggle your toes and your fingers. And maybe you notice coolness against the skin now, or maybe you notice them rubbing together a little abrasiveness. But notice how all these sensations, they change. So if we affix ourselves to something that's temporary, we can cause suffering. Now move your arms and your legs very subtly. And again, appreciate the constant change of sensation. Each arm feels different from the other. Each leg from arm, everything is different. Each moment is different. So appreciate the plethora of sensations without getting attached to them. Appreciate being in the body, but not attached to the body. Take a deeper breath in and a deeper breath out. Appreciate each moment, this aliveness. Because if it comes, it will go. So appreciate the richness of your life. And then from here, with your arms and legs active and your breath a little bit more Conscious and deep, bring your knees into your chest from your laying down position. So just bring those knees in one last time. Give them a hug. Think of the mantra, loka samasta suki no bhavantu. May all creatures be 
peaceful, be happy. And so as we hug ourselves, we know that we want to experience peace. But when our attention flows out into the world and gets overly attached, we can uh, experience discomfort, pain, suffering. But the peace, there's inner peace that we all want, right? So go into yourself, experience that inner peace, and then wish that for others. May all creatures and beings experience peace inside themselves. May all creatures be happy. Good. So roll over to your right side, and we're going to press into our left hand and uh, gently come back on up to sit. So come on back on up, finding a nice, comfortable seated position, right? Asana is steady and comfortable. And we feel a little bit better here in Sukhasana now. But we're going to finish with just a few breaths. So allow your eyes to close as you come up. Be aware of the breath on the nose, or if you're breathing through your mouth, through the mouth. You can take conscious breaths if you need to, if you need to feel the breath. If you can just be aware of the presence of the breath, that's fine as well. But the breath anchors us here into the present moment. And then from this present moment, right, we notice the tension is flowing out. So the perception of the breath, these sensations, then we can turn it in upon itself and reflect on awareness of self and establish again connection to that inner peace that's constantly with us. All right, let's finish with a nice big breath in and out like we normally do for our classes. So all that is is just a big inhale, holding the breath for a second, and then sighing it out, letting our chin come to chest and relaxing. So let's do that all together. Take a normal breath in. So just a regular inhale and a regular exhale. Clear the lungs out. And now big breath in, hold it in. Sip a little bit more in if we can. And with a big sigh, exhale, bow your chin, go ah. Chin to chest, shrug the shoulders, shake the head and the neck. Use the breath as much as you need to to come back and reflect and be present with that inner peace that is always with you. And as you go through your day, remembering the breath as well, send peace and happiness to others. May they experience that peace um, and happiness in their hearts. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today through either YouTube or through our Google Meet. Um, again, we have the classes on Saturdays here, uh, 1030 to 1130. So I hope to uh, see you next Saturday. We have a couple more weeks for the program. So I want to thank you again for your attendance. And feel free to revisit the videos if you want to uh, take a class uh, throughout the week. All right. Love you guys very much. Thank you again. Namaste. And I will see you next Saturday. Peace.